welcome back to our Sunday munchies and today we are going to be making a banoffee or banoffee Here I picked to actually make a banoffee instead, you know, of a leche flan or like a mango float. Since I'm making this for my family, this is not going to be vegan, but definitely let me know in the comments down below if you want a vegan version of this, because I myself couldn't really eat it as well. And before we get started, I would just like to inform you guys that there are different ways to make a banoffee pie, and this is just my version of making it. So let's get started. Okay, so you will be needing a container to store in your banoffee pie later. So for the crust, you'll need some digestive biscuits or you can either use some crushed gray hams. I will be using some crushed gray hams later. And then you'll need 100 grams of butter that's melted and then a little bit of condensed milk. So in here, I use 200 grams of crushed grams, and I'm going to gradually add in the butter to mix it in. And eventually, I transferred it in the bigger bowl. And then after that, I added in about one and one half tablespoon of condensed milk to make the crust stay together and harden because I find that the grams breaks easily and it doesn't really hold if it was just butter. Now that's done, I'm going to transfer that into our molder. So make sure that the sides are going to be filled and you need to press it down so that it will stay intact. So I'm going to put this on the fridge for a while and let it sit there. So for the caramel filling, you'll need 100 grams of butter, one half cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of cream, and one full can of condensed milk. So in a pot, I will melt the butter and the sugar, and you will have to keep on stirring until the sugar is fully dissolved. And remember to keep the heat low because you don't want the butter or the sugar to burn. Now once the sugar is liquefied, you can now add in the condensed milk plus the cream, and then bring it up to a boil for about a minute or so and then keep on stirring because you don't want the edges to burn or the bottom part to stick to the pan and after that I'll turn off the heat when it gets into this consistency and I'm gonna allow it to cool down and once it's completely cooled down you can now see that this turns into this chewy gooey caramel goodness and this is why you do not overcook it because it will harden if you cook it longer so for the cream part I will be using a 250 ml of full cream and then I will be whisking it for seven minutes until it becomes like this now if you have an electric beater you can use that too because my arms were sore after whisking this non-stop for seven minutes and after that I will slice the banana into thin slices now I know some people cut it into chunks but I like it this way so that you can easily layer this when we build up our pie so now let's assemble our pie so here's the crust a while ago and it's all set now and I'm going to add in the caramel first and I'm going to make sure to fill up all the sides and I know traditionally the bananas go in first, but with me, I like adding the caramel layer first. And then I'm going to add in the bananas now. Now you can add in as many bananas as you like. With me, I stacked up two layers of bananas. And you can even create multiple layers if you want to, but you'll be needing a bigger container for that if that's what you're going for. So now I'm going to top everything with the whipped cream. And I'm just going to use my whisk because ain't nobody got time for a spatula smooth in the top <laughs> no I'm just kidding but my camera was dying so I didn't have time to get the spatula for this clip so after that I'm going to let that sit in the fridge for about two hours so and after two hours I'm gonna pull it off the fridge and I will add in some shaved chocolate on top basically I just got a block of chocolate and I just used a knife to shave it you can add as many chocolate toppings as you want and I find that the dark chocolate is really suited for this because it balances out the sweetness of the pie so this is it I'm going to let this chill on the chiller for another hour before serving it because this type of dessert is actually ideal to serve when it's chilled. Also, don't remove it from its container unless you are going to So after an hour, I took it off its smolder, and now this is what it looks like. So I'm going to slice it and let you all see the inside part. This actually smells really good, and I'm planning to make a vegan version of it so I can actually eat some as well, because this is for my family. And speaking of my family, I'm going to let my family members try this out and see what they think of it, because I know some of you are wondering if the foods that I'm making on Sunday munchies are even good, so let's see their reaction. Okay.
it for the crust. Are you eating it for the crust? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Does it taste good? At last, we did something good. Oh my gosh, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like my vegan meals. <laughs> what happened? Okay. Ready. So, how does it taste? It's good. Yay! So that is it. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. So next week, I'm actually planning to make some vegan recipes. And that is it for now. I will see you all on my next video on Tuesday. Bye!